Hello, welcome back. I'm Mr. Charlie and this is AP Physics Review, lesson four, forces and Newton's laws of motion. So up until this point, we've talked a lot about motion, right? Kinematics, the study of motion, displacement, acceleration, velocity, these are all qualities of motion. They describe how things move, well, not, not why they move, right? We describe the manner of moving and how far it goes, how fast it goes, how fast the speed is changing, things like this. But we haven't discussed why things move. And they do, they move for a reason, right? If I have my racer here, it's motionless, right? No motion, suddenly I throw it, and it, it moves because I threw it, I interacted with it. Um, and what caused it to move, and what caused it to stop moving? These are questions uh, that are answered by an analysis involving forces. So, uh, we've developed the tools needed, as I said, to analyze the various properties of motion, but what is the ultimate cause of motion? Uh, also, under what conditions is motion sustained? Or are there any conditions required to sustain motion? Uh, when does motion stop? When does it cease? Why do all these things happen? Well, forces and then Newton's three laws of motion are quantitative ways of relating force and motion to answer these questions. Uh, as I said before last lesson, generally speaking, we consider the reference frame to be Earth. Whenever we have, for example, a car moving or a ball being thrown, we always look at it as, as moving relative to the Earth. We could change that assumption and like, look at it from a car driving by, and that would give us a completely different picture of the motion. But to be consistent uh, with the most number of observers, it's generally at most convenient to use a common reference frame, which is standing still at the surface of the Earth. So therefore, at rest here, in the rest of this lesson, will generally be taken to mean that the object is at rest, has zero velocity, in the Earth's inertial reference frame. So, what is a force? A force, we know force. Forces are pushes or pulls, right? I pushed my racer to make it fly across the room. It didn't fly across of its own accord. Um, and we observe that objects don't start moving on their own. My racer didn't decide to get up and fly across the room. It happened because I pushed it, because I put a force on it. So, they have to interact with some other object in order for this force to make its effect felt. Uh, there are two main, main types of interactions. There are direct interactions, like through collisions, uh, where I, you know, I, I literally pushed, like my hand collided with the eraser to make it, make it fly. Uh, and there are also action at a distance interactions, like gravity and the electrostatic force of repulsion or attraction. Uh, this is an example like gravity, because gravity comes from the mass of the Earth, and the mass of the Earth did not physically touch the eraser to make it fall, right? But it's still pulled on it. So the force of gravity, even though they weren't physically in contact, this is what we call action at a distance. And those are the only two ways the forces can make themselves felt and cause changes in velocity, cause motion. So, as I said, when objects interact, a force is created, uh, and this force may change either the direction or speed of an object. This comes from the definition of velocity. Velocity has two components, as we've said a number of times, both direction and speed. And so, for example, you can change the speed when the car, your car is driving down the road and you hit on your brakes, you know, your brake pads, pads clamp down your axle, which exerts a force on the wheel, which exerts a force on the road, which stops your car. This is an example of changing your linear velocity from some velocity, maybe 30 meters per second, down to zero as you stop. Alternatively, you can turn your car, and then you have a force between your tires and the road at an angle, and that force is going to be perpendicular to your velocity, which will cause you to go into centripetal motion, and maybe then you will turn. A force is also required to turn. Similarly, this is the same example as the swinging the ball around my head on the string. The string, the tension force in the string, constantly pulls the ball toward the center. And even though the speed's not changing, there's still a force there, which causes an acceleration uh, in the form of the changing velocity, the changing direction of the ball. So, the common denominator here, the common factor between all these different changes in motion, is that 